एवरीवन वेलकम बैक माय टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज यूरिनरी कैलक्यूलर व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज नेफ्रोलिथियासिस और यूरोलिथियासिस आई थिंक एवरीबॉडी माइट बी नोइंग व्हाट द मीनिंग ऑफ कैलक्यूला इज व्हिच इज नथिंग बट स्टोन फॉर्मेशन इन द यूरिनरी सिस्टम सो नेक्स्ट मूविंग ऑन टू द प्रॉपर डेफिनेशन इट इज नथिंग बट सॉलिड पार्टिकल्स ऑफ डिफरेंट कंपोजिशन व्हिच मे रिमेन विद इन द रीनल पैरेनकाइमा और इन द रीनल कलेक्टिंग सिस्टम और मे बी पास डाउन इन टू द यूरेटर एंड द ब्लाडर सी फर्स्ट स्टोन इज फॉर्म इन द किडनी दे मे स्लिप्ड थ्रू यूरेटर एंड कम टू द ब्लाडर ऑल्सो ड्यूरिंग दिस पैसेज द कैलक्यूला मे इरीटेट द यूरेटर ओके एंड मे बिकम लॉज एग्जाम्पल वेन द ल्यूमिन इज स्मॉल एंड द स्टोन इज बिग इन दैट कंडीशन इट विल गेट लॉज देयर ओनली सो इन दैट वे इट विल अपस्ट्रक द यूरिन फ्लो एंड कॉजेज हाइड्रो यूरेटर which is nothing but dilatation of the ureters so here when the stone is slipping from the kidneys through the ureter into the bladder that it may get lost in any of these three places that is in the ureter pelvic junction this is the junction between the ureter and the pelvis of the kidney or in the distal ureter which is there at the level of the iliac vessel or in the ureter vesical junction it is a junction between the ureter and the bladder coming to the types of urinary calculi the first one is calcium stone which is very common and it accounts for around 75% of cases so here it can be purely calcium oxalate stone which accounts for 50% of cases or it can be purely calcium phosphate stone which accounts for 5% of cases or it can be mixture of this both that is mixture of calcium oxalate and a mixture of calcium phosphate this mixture will account for around 45% of cases so next moving on to the structure okay structure of that calcium stone these stones are usually very small means less than a centimeter okay and they are ovoid in shape they are hard with granular rough surface because of this rough surface it will cause irritation and there is sometimes bleeding this bleeding that is the pigment of the blood will get deposited on the stones and the color will change to dark brown okay they appear dark brown in color because the blood pigment gets deposited on them so next coming to the mixed stones or to white stones this will account for around 15% of cases of urinary calculi these stones are composed of magnesium ammonium calcium and phosphate and they are called as triple phosphate stones or to white stones these are yellow white or gray in color and they are very soft when compared to those calcium oxalate stones which are also called as mulberry stones these stones they are friable and irregular in shape these stones usually grow in the renal pelvis okay uh, that is in the minor or the major calyces so that will acquire that shape only because it's very soft so it will result in formation of stag horn stone which is large and it is single stone so third is uric acid stone the stones accounts for only 6% of cases of urinary calculi the stones are obviously made up of uric acid and they are radiolucent in nature that is they can be seen through x ray if the uric acid stone contains calcium oxalate then they become opaque means they cannot be seen through x ray these stones they are soft they are yellowish brown in color they are hard and often these are multiple fourth is cystine stone which accounts for only 2% of urinary calculi these stones they are small they are rounded they are smooth and they are often multiple they are yellowish and they are waxy there are even other types of calculi which accounts for less than 2% it occurs in cases like inherited abnormality of enzyme metabolism example hereditary xanthinuria developing xanthine stones coming to the causes under this there is infection with organisms such as proteus pseudomonas klebsiella this organisms will produce urea and finally cause stasis of urine and this will precipitate the formation of stone next is hot climate in hot climate there is less of solution and more of solute because of increased concentration of solute it will result in precipitation of calcium finally this formation of calcium oxalate stone dietary factors diet rich in calcium that is in tomatoes milk spinach rhubarb all this will precipitate the formation of calcium oxalate stone and also diet rich in red meat that will result in formation of uric acid stone 
diet lacking in vitamin A causes desquamation of renal epithelium which precipitates calcium and this will alter and result in formation of stone. Metabolic causes when there is hyperparathyroidism that will result in hypercalcinosis ultimately there is pelvic stone formation. In gout there is increased amount of uric acid that will result in formation of uric acid stones. Immobilization that is when patient is unable to move. Example paraplegic patients they secrete large amount of calcium in the urine ultimately resulting in formation of calcium oxalate stones. Next is decreased urinary citrate. Here citric acid is very much important to keep the urinary pH low but when the citric acid levels decreases that will result in formation of calcium stone. Inadequate urinary drainage. This occurs in cases like horseshoe kidney and in undescended kidneys. So in this condition there is stasis of urine which will ultimately result in formation of stone. This is Randall's plague. In this what happens initially there is either small erosion or an ulcer formation at the tip of the renal papilla okay on which there is minute concentration or minor calcium particles get deposited ultimately resulting in stone formation. Coming to the clinical features in this there is renal pain which is dull in character and it is pricking type of pain. It is present posteriorly in the renal angle. There is nausea and vomiting. It is due to intense sympathetic stimulation which is caused by stretching of the renal capsule mediated by celiac plexus. There is also ureteric colic. When the stone gets impacted in the pelvic ureteric junction that is junction between the pelvis of the kidney and the ureter or anywhere in the ureter this will result in severe colicky pain which will originate from the loin radiating towards the groin, testicles, vulva and the medial side of the thigh okay and also there is referred pain which is due to irritation of the genitofemoral nerve. Next there is hematuria which is seen in oxalate stone because the edges are very sharp that will irritate the ureters ultimately there is bleeding and finally hematuria occurs. There is also a recurrent UTI which in which there is fever, chills, rigor, burning micturation, pyuria and there is increased frequency of micturation. There is guarding and rigidity of the back and the abdominal muscles during the severe attack of pain. Investigations under this blood urea and creatinine test is performed to rule out whether the kidneys are functioning properly or no. Plain x-ray is done. Here many of the urinary calculi are not at all visible in x-ray except uric acid stone. So here enlarged renal shadow itself can be seen. USG is done. Then IVP that is intravenous pilogram. This is done to locate the stone exactly in relation to the kidney and ureter and also to assess the renal function. Then urine culture and sensitivity test is done to see for any infections. Finally coming to the treatment. First of all the patient with urinary calculi are asked to consume a lot of water. Then antispasmodics are given. Flushing therapy is done. In this about 2 liters of IV fluid with 20 to 40 mg of injection frucimide is given. Then extra corporeal shockwave lithotripsy is done. Laser lithotripsy is done. In this by photothermal mechanism all types of stones are fragmented. There are certain open surgical procedures like pyelolithotomy, nephrolithotomy, partial nephrectomy, nephrectomy, pylonephrolithotomy and extended pylolithotomy. Certain endoscopic procedures are performed. Apart from that, prevention from stone diseases include fluid management. As I told you, it is the first line of treatment. About 1.5 litre of water per day is given. Avoid red meat because it is rich in uric acid and will result in uric acid stone formation. Certain drugs are given which include xyloric sodium bicarbonate in the uric acid stone, potassium citrate in calcium stone, thiazide small dose calcium stone, then D penicillamine in cysteine stone. So guys if you like the video please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.